When a judge makes a legal decision, there are many legal factors that could affect the outcome. Are there controlling or persuasive precedents from authoritative courts deciding in similar circumstances? But some critics worry that many illicit factors might also affect the outcome. For example, is the defendant likable or is the judge biased? There's also been speculation that judges from different jurisdictions, particularly those from common versus civil law jurisdictions, decide differently from one another. But based on the evidence that we have, such speculations can be hard to assess. Holger Spahman is a professor of law at Harvard who has conducted a unique experimental study of hundreds of judges from jurisdictions including the US, China, Germany, and India. Holger's studies test whether illicit factors affect judicial decision-making, but also whether illicit factors like precedent do. Today I'm speaking to Holger to learn what his experimental studies found. Does precedent determine judges' decisions? And if not, what does? Welcome to ETH Holger. It's really great to have you here. Before we begin, could you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, so I uh, studied law in France, Germany, and the United States, and then I actually qualified for the bar in Germany and the United States. I practiced for a little bit in New York and in Europe, and then I did my legal doctorate and then became an economist by doing a PhD in economics as well. And I'm now doing law and economics, meaning the application of economic methods to questions uh, around law. Today we're talking about your paper, Judging Around the World, Experimental, Clickstream, and Writing Evidence from the Lab. What sparked your interest in these topics and methods? Well, you know, as a lawyer, a fundamental question in law is um, how and, and if legal materials like statutes and precedents um, guide judicial behavior, whether they guide it at all or whether perhaps they are completely indeterminate. And, uh, you know, if you're an experiment, uh, empirically trained researcher, obviously the question is, well, can we study this empirically? Can we figure this out uh, using some data? Uh, and similarly, um, there's a long-standing debate or, I don't know, cliches around uh, the law that judges and in particular and lawyers in general from different jurisdictions behave very differently. In particular, common law lawyers, meaning the English-speaking world, and continental or civil law lawyers from continental Europe and the jurisdictions are influenced by those. And again, I thought, hey, maybe we can just uh, study this empirically. So could you tell us a little more about the experimental setup and the task? Where were your judge participants from? What was the task that they faced? And what materials could they use? Yeah, we had um, about 330 judges from seven jurisdictions around the world, from Argentina, Brazil, China, France, Germany, India, and the United States. And uh, we made them judge a realistic case. Not a real case, it wasn't in a courthouse, but uh, we derived the case from a real case, an international criminal law case, an appeals case. So they had to decide whether the trial court had made the right decision in this criminal law um, case. We gave the judges real legal materials, so they had access to the trial court judgment, they had the statute, and they had a precedent, and we gave them briefs just like they would receive in a real case, um, arguing both sides of this, uh, of this case. And now, importantly, we randomly assigned to each judge one of three precedents and one of two defendants. Of course, the precedents uh, pointed in different directions, either for affirming the trial court's opinion or uh, reversing it and uh, equally the defendants, one of them was a nice defendant and the other one was a not nice defendant. What did you find? Did precedent have an effect? And what about defendant likability? We find no effect of precedent. Absolutely nothing, even in the common law jurisdictions, or especially in the common law jurisdictions that supposedly have precedent as the basis of their law. And our precedents were strong precedents. One of them was actually a disguised 
uh, form the, of the case that was actually decided by the international uh, court and the other one uh, was not exactly the same case but very close and very specifically argued about this legal question so those were strong precedents and we had asked law professors in advance what they expected from the experiment and nobody uh, expected this um, by contrast, the defendant had a sizable effect. The uh, nice defendant was sent to prison 10% less often than the not nice defendant. Your paper uses clickstream data to shed further light on the judging process. What is that method and what did it suggest? Yeah, so our judges, um, they worked on a computer, meaning they saw the documents on a computer. And this allowed us to take a snapshot every 10 seconds of which passage of which document were they looking at right then. And then this way we created um, a, a trace, not of their thought process in their head, but at least of the outward manifestation of that thought process. So this allows us to dig into something that's usually not visible, which is what are they actually thinking? Now, judges write opinions, but opinions are what they choose to reveal to the outside world. They may not even know what their own thinking looked like. And here we can see it. We can see what they did. And what, he, what we did see was that the judges from around the world, they surprisingly to me, they, they look pretty much the same. We didn't detect any patterns of the judges from one jurisdiction looking different from judges from another jurisdiction, let alone um, judges from common law countries looking different from judges from civil law countries. 